40 years ago, smart materials barely existed. Now, not only can they mimic nature, they can move radically beyond it to accomplish what has always seemed impossible. Take camouflage. Nature is full of animals that have evolved to stay hidden. The lionfish has a fixed appearance that allows it to fade into a specific environment. But the octopus can change its coloring to blend into different backgrounds. Now, new discoveries in materials offer us an approach to hiding that nature has never found. Why not just cloak yourself in invisibility? The road to just such a cloak begins with Sir John Pendry, a theoretical physicist and mathematician at Imperial College London. He's come up with new meta-materials. Meta meaning beyond. This one is made of plastic encasing tiny copper rings. It's an experimental model, but someday metamaterials like it may influence visible light in mind-blowing ways. I produced the design and a formula for, for hiding something. We, we said if you want to completely make something completely invisible, then this is what you do. It started off a, a huge research program. I traveled to Duke University in North Carolina to talk with one of Pendry's collaborators on the invisibility cloak, and the first to actually build one. Thanks to the movies, like H.G. Wells' Invisible Man, I thought I knew what to expect. You're the guy developing the invisibility cloak? That's right. I, I have to say, it's, it works amazingly well. I, I can't even see you. Well, actually, I'm over here. Oh! Oh, <laughs> sorry. Maybe David Smith has something more like that Harry Potter movie. My body's gone. I know what that is. That's an invisibility cloak. Heck, even I can get into that act. As a television professional, I use a little something we like to call the green screen. Ooh, I'm beheaded. All this techno trickery does make one thing clear. Making something invisible is really about trying to make what's behind an object visible, bringing the reflected light of the background around the object like water flowing around a rock in a stream. So this should probably strike you just from the geometry as to what its function is. So the, the hidden region is right here. Uh, a wave comes in. Anywhere in here? Anywhere in there, that's right. Oh, we're talking big stuff. I could put a piece of cheese or a right. marble or a... Right. Oh, right. wow. And uh, your waves could come in, and, and uh, this effective material causes them to get moved around like this and then restored on the other side. There is a catch. Visible light waves, from red to blue, are just a narrow slice of the electromagnetic spectrum. Smith is working in a different slice, where the wavelengths are longer in the microwave region. That's why his invisibility cloak is, well, visible. It's not working yet, though. It's not working because you right through it. You're looking with the wrong wavelengths. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't think about visible waves. Think about, OK. Microwave. Time to test the cloak in this. Basically, a giant microwave oven. And I get to choose what to hide. You know what? This is in the spirit of that fabled lady when microwave ovens first came out. She washed her poodle and put it in the microwave <laughs> to dry it. Yeah, except. Uh, Actually, in this case, it would have protected the poodle, right? Would have protected the poodle. The, the microwaves would have gone right around, and the poodle would not have cooked. That's right. Wow. With the frog in place, Smith starts the test. Here's a graphic display of what's going on in the tester, looking down from above. A microwave generator on the left sends out test waves. If there's no object in the tester, they cleanly pass from left to right. On the other hand, if my frog sat uncloaked in the middle, it would scatter the waves, disrupting the pattern. Now, if my frog had a perfect cloak, the waves would pass around it, cleanly emitted on the other side without any change. Here's Smith's actual result of the test. It isn't perfect. You can see the waves aren't the same after hitting the cloak, but it's getting there. So it looks like it's actually sort of working. It's working. If you were sitting here, what you would see is uh, no distortion. You just see uh, basically a reduction in intensity. But you wouldn't be able to make out what was being scattered in here. So you even wouldn't see your frog. Even though you're looking right at it. Right. 
with your microwave sensitive eyes. That's right. Well, now what about the frog? Can the frog see him? No, the frog can't see him. If you're inside one of these invisibility spheres, you wouldn't be able to see outside. And if you looked at the walls, what you would see would be a reflection of yourself. From the inside, the appearance is, is as of a mirror. Of course, that's not a problem yet. Scientists haven't created a cloak that works with visible light, though they're getting ever closer. And invisibility is just one application. The promise of metamaterials is a revolution in our manipulation of light. We may see new powerful lenses that can focus on something as small as a virus attacking a cell, or new technologies that scan for cancer, or hidden explosives. It's a new frontier, and like ingenuity can combine. And that's making stuff smarter.